Oh. And there, like, at that moment, I didn't even notice that the snake had double fangs. See, I thought we had discovered a new species. It's an anomaly. <laughs> it might as well have been an albino double fanged rattlesnake. Yeah. Fire! What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome back to Base Camp again from our set here in Columbus, Ohio at our favorite restaurant, 101 BK, where we're not actually camping at all, despite the fact that we have a nice, warm, cozy fire. You guys ready to dive into this? Sure. Yeah. What are we uh, getting into today, Coyote? You never tell us what we're doing. You say, just show up, and we do. And today, you don't even have coffee, so. Nope, that's water. And that is water, and that is also water. But as you may notice, I've switched up the color of the mugs today. The green are on the outside, and the brown's in the middle. Last week, the brown was on the outside, and the green was in the middle. Maybe you guys noticed that from at home. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Hmm. But Attention today, to because it's so cold outside, I thought it'd be fun to take us back to one of our favorite warm locations, the Sonoran Desert. Ooh, Ooh okay. I love the desert. We filmed many episodes there. Yeah, I mean, my gosh, we must have been in the desert like, I'm gonna say six, seven times at this point. Well, actually, really? this is the yeah. first, I'll give you a hint. This is the first trip Mario was ever on, where we took you from the swamps to the sand, Ooh. despite the fact that we shot like, what, 10 episodes on that trip. So yeah. it's a little harder to pick. <laughs> Okay. Any guesses? Uh, Gila Monster? No. Hmm. Harvester Ants? Nope. Huh. Where we're actually going to visit is one of my favorite places along the edge of Cat Mountain where we encountered the double fang rattlesnake. Oh, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember that very, very well. Tommy Two Fang, one of our favorite reptiles from the Southwest, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. So if you guys are ready, let's dive into the video. All right, here we go. I'm Kyrie Peterson. This morning we're in the Sonoran Desert. So serious. Cat Mountain. Sun's just cresting over the horizon, which is the perfect time to find reptiles. Let's break trail and see what we can find. Is that your selfie stick? Ah, yeah, pause it, pause it, pause it. That oh, is oh. absolutely my Good selfie catch, stick. Mario. That is the selfie stick. You can catch it in all of its glory right there. And actually, that was a new stick in Arizona as compared to oh. the stick that was used in the previous episode where I claim that yeah, I invented so the selfie stick. You don't actually stick. like take the same stick from no. location to location. Well, that's what makes the selfie stick so cool. You get a new stick in each location you attach the camera to. The camera stays the same. The stick mm. changes. OK. Mm. Right? No. Stick's not included. Can your no. selfie stick take a selfie photo? It can, but you have to rig it up very carefully, and then you actually have to use another stick to press the button on your phone to take the picture. Sounds complicated. It's a little more complicated than the ones that, you know, they evolved and they take the pictures themselves with all the mechanical aspects. But the original selfie stick is, of course, the best. Check out the Brave Wilderness store to pick yours up today. Now, what I will notice about this <laughs> intro, too... there's none for sale. Well, okay. I mean, technically, there's none for sale, but, you know, yeah, you can imagine what it would be like. Okay. Now, I noticed in this intro, they're very rigid. Remember when we used to do this? You guys will notice in the videos now, there's no more like introduction of I'm Coyote Peterson. We got to this point where we were like, I think everybody knows your name at this point. Yeah. Maybe we can stop. Well, I think the name. audience actually said like, hey, you don't have to introduce yourself yeah, we, every single time. By the time we got to about 3 million subscribers, people were like, we know your name. We, yeah. we, we've watched the hundred some videos you have at this point. So we were like, okay, we'll mix it up and start pulling footage from the episode. But that one was a little longer than some of the other episodes that uh, started off like that. Yep, but still a classic from oh, the yeah. Brave Wilderness Library. So you guys ready to get back into it? Let's go. All right. Still have the old logo. The Southwest Tales is an epic backdrop for any adventure. And there's no location more picture perfect than the Sonoran Desert. Today the crew and I are Can you even hear how fast oh my you're, God, I was you're like, reading My voiceover, I'm just <laughs> speeding along. Yeah. There's those Tahoes that we got from GM. Those are brand new when we got them. Yep. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, pause that, pause that, pause that. Back that up to that, that Choya rip. This was actually the second time, no, actually this, I think was the first time that I got spiked by a Choya, because remember, I think it was our next trip to the desert where we actually filmed the Choya spiking episode, right. when I showed you how to remove a Choya from your hand, mm -hmm. and then of course there was the time that I fell into the Choya catching yeah. the tarantula yeah. hawk, yeah. and that well, was even worse. Well, backstory on this Choya uh, spike, this wasn't on accident, or this was on purpose. Yeah, this one was on accident. purpose. Like, you actually walked up to him and like, hey guys, you want to see this? And we're like, you won't do it. And you're right. like, whack. Yeah. And then what's funny is that none of that audio actually made it into the episode, this episode specifically, just the physical representation of me ripping that from my hand. Yeah. Those things hurt. Oh, yeah, they hurt. I got some on me by accident. That was my first time in the desert. Mm -hmm. I was not experienced. Biological landmines. Right. Let's roll. 
Everything you come across stands to slow down even the most ambitious adventure. Look at those selfie stick shots. It's like 7.30 in the morning. I'm already pouring sweat. It's really important to make sure you stay hydrated in the desert at all times. So. Oh. Oh. Whoa, pause it for a second. I can't believe, how, how much time have we gone through so far in this episode? 52 seconds. 52 seconds and we're, and we're already, already introducing yeah. the animal. It's crazy. Now I feel like our buildups are, are so much more elaborate with, like I've said, the drone shots and just all the production that goes into it. Yeah. And of course we start figuring out that like designing and placing a few more animals into the episode made a lot yeah. of sense. Setting up location. You know, and you gotta remember back uh, when we were filming these videos, like we weren't on location but more than like five days. Right. So we were shooting anywhere from three to four videos a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was pretty intense, and you know we didn't have all that time to do the droning and right. all the other B-roll shots. Yeah, I think now we're also a lot more opportunistic, and we film the actual search and hunt mm -hmm. of the species, and um, we kind of give a lot more background story on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in these days, we would just kind of go out exploring anything we found. It was like, okay. That's a candidate for a video. Right. Rolls I mean, down. and in this location specifically, yeah. that time of day, I mean, I remember how hot it was. And this is, people don't realize, this is like 7 o'clock in the morning. It gets mm -hmm. light in the desert at like 4.30 a.m. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's super early, super hot already. Um, and sure enough, we stumbled. Well, actually, you stumbled upon, yeah. so let's keep watching. Yeah, we'll go back a little bit. So kind of walk everybody through this. This is uh, me walking. It's actually a Did you even know you were recording? Because it just looks like you were running random footage. The no. camera's not pointing at anything other than the rocks in your feet. I mean, I think I was recording by accident here. You'll notice this is a different shot. That's yeah. a different shot altogether. Right. I think I was uh, filming somebody else in the foreground. I think it was Mar maybe Mario. But uh, you can see, like, I was going to go step up on this rock, and we'll replay it. This is what happens. Oh. And then, boom. Hey, That's where I heard it. Over here. What? Chance, I slip and Chance is like, what happened? I like it. Ripped up my hand. Okay, watch your foot here. Chance, come up slow. Oh, yeah. That is a Western Dynamax rattlesnake. Now, what's the first thing you do when you know that there's a rattlesnake? Do you, do you just put your face up to the hole? Or? Uh, you definitely shouldn't, no. But I was <laughs> like, you know, you said snake. You didn't say right. rattlesnake, so I was like, well, there are a number of different species that could have been. Mario, you were a little further off to the side at this point, so you hadn't yeah. even seen the snake yet. And actually, when I looked in, so you see this shot here. We shot these B-roll shots after the fact, once we had you know, fully determined that yes, it was a rattlesnake, but at first, all you could see was the coils, and the snake didn't have a whole lot of definition in its scale, so it's actually kind of tough to tell what species it was at first, and then, of course, you hear the rattle, and you go, oh, that is a rattlesnake. Yeah, the sound, the sound gave it away, yeah. for sure. Um, so I guess we can keep playing now, yeah. but uh, if you do ever, you know, hear a rattle from a snake coming out of a hole in the ground, probably don't stick your face up to it. No. Just say. Or your hand. Yeah. That ground was extremely yeah. broken apart and slippery. Very too. crumbly. Yeah. 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 Like you see, the snake was curious there. Now what you don't realize is the snake is actually a bit further away from me than you would think. It mm -hmm. looks like I'm up against that hole. But there is about a foot and a half to two feet between me and where the actual hole is, and the snake is tucked back in there. So I, I'm not as close as it looks. That was a cool shot. That was me holding the selfie stick. See, the selfie stick there is actually in the hole. And that shot, the snake was sticking its head out looking at the camera. Yep, see, there, there you have it. Oh, that was such a cool snake. Big rattlesnake, too. Oh, coyote, don't put your hand and, in there. And so everybody knows that's that's really the rattle. Yeah. That's It, it, it sounds almost like a, an effect. But right. That's yeah. the actual sound. Yeah, it's, it's always amazing when people hear a rattlesnake rattle for the first time. It's mm -hmm. extremely loud, mm -hmm. and it's it's very noticeable, which right. is what the snake wants, right? It yeah. wants to signify where it's Oh, we at. noticed. Yeah. yeah, we definitely noticed. Let me ask you this question, Mario, wildlife biologist. What makes the rattlesnakes rattle rattle? Like, why does it make that sound? So contrary to what most people would think, you kind of think there might be like some little segments or something in there, like a Like maraca. little beans in yeah, there like or something. Yeah, like little beans or something. So it's actually the keratin, mm. the same stuff as the scales that are composed, and it's actually overlapping each other, and it just kind of hits the walls ah, of each okay. rattle or each segment. Cool. And did you know that when a snake sheds, it adds a new segment to the rattle? And those are called buttons, right? They're called buttons. Every yeah. segment is called a button. A button. And what? What's a, what's a newborn rattlesnake called? Snakelet. 
Snake, <laughs> a, a snake button. button Actually, snake. when, when a, a rattlesnake is born, it's, it's a neonate, isn't it? A neonate, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't have, yeah, it doesn't right. have a rattle. Has a little nub. Yeah, we've yeah, seen nub. that before. No, they're not snakelets and they're not buttons. They are neonates. Neonates. And can they rattle when they're born? No. no. Ah, but they are still incredibly toxic. So even a baby rattlesnake bite can affect you just as much as a full-grown rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. Look out, coyote. Big Western diamondback. He's, oh, he's looking at the camera. He's like, oh, who are all these people? This was, I look at this now. This was so dangerous with all that crumbly rock and sand. Yeah, you can just see all the rocks just cascading down as we're filming. <laughs> look at that. But allow me to keep myself, you guys, and the snake safer throughout this scene. I don't, I don't do these pen and hold things with snakes anymore. It's yeah. just, it's honestly, it's just too dangerous. Yeah, is, is there a safe way to do, there's really no safe, 100% safe way to do that. No, ha ha handling and trying to grab the head of a rattlesnake is about one of the most unsafe things I think you can do. But yeah. back then when we wanted to be able to show people the fangs of a snake and something like that, we would do it. But I, I certainly feel at this point, um, we just have, have gravitated away from it, to be honest with you guys at this point. Yeah, once you grab the snake by the neck, it gets into a very defensive mm -hmm. uh, posture and behavior. And of course, the fangs are pretty long. They could actually kind of flex them out. Right. So you have potential of getting bit, right. even when you're holding and them. They, and they can bite through their jaw, too. Potentially that as well. Yeah. 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 Risky move. Yep. All right, let's uh, see what happens next. It's a nice shot. A Western Diamondback rattlesnake on the side of a rock face like that. And there you have it. Yeah, I kind of had a jump cut there. I know we were like, man, we got to get into a more secure spot off to the side. Those rocks were so slippery. That's a big snake. I want to make sure that I have a firm yet gentle hold on his head. And you can see these big puppy spots on the back of his head there. Those are the venom glands. And I definitely mm. do not want to get tagged by this snake. This is the second most venomous species that lives here in the Sonoran Desert, second only to the coral snake. Although these guys are fairly more Now we know otherwise, right? Especially when provoked. Yeah, pause it. So technically the Mojave rattlesnake is more venomous than the Western Diamondback mm -hmm. rattlesnake. So it would have gone coral snake, Mojave, Western Diamondback. Yeah. Sometimes you make mistakes in the heat of the action. Now, one thing that uh, I've always thought was interesting about rattlesnakes, uh, specifically all vipers actually, mm -hmm. is that their heads aren't really that rigid. Like every time that you've uh, headed a snake, you can see the, how pliable their jaws are. Right. And, and why is that, Mario? Well, venomous snakes in general are actually not as tough or as kind of thick bodied as like boas and pythons. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be, right? They've got venom, that's their defense. So actually, their skeletal structure is, is very delicate. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas a boa. You can, you can feel that yeah. when you like, don't ever hold a rattlesnake, <laughs> but I can feel that anytime I've held a rattlesnake or even like a ferret lance working with mm -hmm. that with the snake tongs, right. the body is, it almost feels like a semi deflated water balloon. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have a, a delicate structure mm -hmm. compared to other species that don't have venom. Um, non venomous snakes have to be tougher to like constrict, mm -hmm. you know? Cool. Now look at those eyes. Now, this is a pit viper, and what that means is they have heat sensing pits right in front of the nostrils. And you can see how hot it was. I'm like pouring sweat right there. I think I was a little nervous that's, at the same that's time. A, that's a little dangerous. Yeah, I probably right don't there. want to put your finger on the front of a rattlesnake's <laughs> nose like that. And, white banding, and the eastern has a black and tan banding. And that black and white banding has earned this snake the nickname Coontail. Now, rattlesnakes are typically ambush predators. They'll lay in wait for a, a desert kangaroo rat, maybe a lizard to come scurrying across its path. That's such a big tongue, it just able to fork that out and, and keep you smelling us. You, you can tell how uncomfortable you are. Yeah, now that now I'm watching this, I can, your, your delivery is so like expedited. You're just trying to like get the words out so you can put the snake down. Uh, it, it, it's nerve wracking to yeah. hold a snake of that size. I mean, we were at least a two hour walk from where our vehicle was parked at this point. I mean, you get bitten by a rattlesnake or any venomous snake for that matter, that far away from a vehicle in that sort of heat and having to walk that sort of distance back to safety or medical help, it'll get your nerves going, that's for sure. Back, and I'm curious to see how long those fangs are. And I'm sure so are you. This is totally fine. I'm just gonna hold the stick see, out See, I here. just don't do this anymore. It's just too dangerous. Ooh. Oh, there you go. and there, like at that moment, I didn't even notice that the snake had double fangs. And yeah. I think, did you did you spot it? I think you called it out, I, right? I, I did. You did? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I had this tight shot yeah. right here. And uh, I think I even, even have it in the video here. Oh. You come across this guy in the Sonoran Desert, 
you step back and give it respect. Does he have double fangs? See, yeah. I noticed at that point, I think yeah. you had pulled the camera off to the side and you were like staring, because you could see my yeah. face there. I'm like, what is he looking at? Is it Bigfoot <laughs> in the background? And then I'm like, it is. I mean, like my mind was just so focused on keeping my fingers away from the fangs and of keeping course, the snake yeah. still for the shot, did not even notice that it had double fangs. Now, yeah. Mario, why would a snake have double fangs like that? Well, snakes lose and regrow their teeth on a regular basis, and the fang is actually a modified tooth. So there's always another fang ready to come down like a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a shark. Kind of like a shark, right. yeah. And I guess at that point, he was just in transition between losing his fangs and the new ones coming in. See, I thought we had discovered a new species or yeah. something. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, a double fanged rattlesnake. It's an anomaly. It might as well have been an albino double fanged rattlesnake. Yeah. It's right, pretty it's, neat to see, though. It is oh, cool. Yeah. I'd never seen it before. Yeah, it was, it was surprising for sure. Look at that. Look how he does. Now, rattlesnakes are constantly replacing their fangs. You can actually see he has two sets of fangs. So one of these sets is getting ready to Which, in all fairness, pause it for a second. That line that I said came in between takes when, Mario, you said almost the exact same thing that you said right now. Snakes are constantly losing their fangs, and sometimes two will grow at the same time. We're like, let's get that fact in there. <laughs> yeah. That's why I always have a wildlife biologist with you. All right, here we go. Set will be in place so he can go out there and hunt for his dinner. Great and shots, though. Oh, yeah. Nice close-ups. Those were with uh, G10, right? That smaller little camera? Uh, yeah, uh, XA20. G XA20. X hollow so that they can inject venom like these little hypodermic needles filled with a mitotoxic, cytotoxic, and hematoxic venom that's gonna put you in some serious pain. I'll tell you what, come out here, you search and you search and you search for one of these snakes. I'm trying to do my own job, and sure enough, it's Mark, director of Breaking Trail, that comes across the Western Diamondback. Good find, buddy, good find. I was actually... We saw two snakes that morning. Remember, we yeah. did find that baby Western Diamondback we rattlesnake, oh, yeah. too. We found it after we saw this one. And we were, like, right on the cusp of probably not being able to find any animals because a lot of times these snakes, reptiles, will come out because they're ectothermic. They'll come out early in the morning to heat up. Mm -hmm. But rattlesnakes are primarily nocturnal, so you can't see them in the morning or in the evening. But mm -hmm. in, in our time now after this going to Arizona, we go out and we do night herping expeditions. Nice. We see rattlesnakes all the time. Right. You know, and it was, I think at this point in the day, too, it was just getting really hot for us. Yeah. We're like, man, if, it, if it's too hot for us, our cameras are starting to overheat. Right, yeah. There's not going to be anything out. And sure enough, boom. Yeah, we got I, lucky. I think people probably noticed that most of our episodes from the desert now also take place at night because we started to learn that animals were more active at night and it was certainly easier to work in those cooler nighttime conditions. Oh my gosh, like in the desert during the day, it can get uh, over 120 degrees. It's crazy. Right, like when we were doing yeah. the desert, desert iguana yeah. episode. Whew, that was oh, a scorcher. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's finish this out. Yeah, definitely need both my hands right now. And I never recommend you go out and try to capture or handle a rattlesnake. Oh, see, this was good. Today. We so always gave those warnings, though, in all these early episodes. Just, desert, guys, never try to pick up a rattlesnake. Look at that selfie mountain. stick used to also release a snake into the wild. You were pretty proud of that. Pretty it was proud. an awesome yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> There's my sunglasses sitting back there on the rock. Whatever happened to those sunglasses? Uh, they're probably still on that rock. I probably left them there. I think I'm gonna call him Tommy Two Fang, but why don't you guys tell me what you think we should have named him? I'm gonna get the heck out of the Sonoran Desert and get into the shade. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Nice. <laughs> Still a very rigid outro. Coyote Peterson, be brave. Make sure that snake's not coming. We'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs> it's, it's funny how the whole process has evolved since these early episodes. And Arizona was technically what our second big production trip that we had gone. We started in Florida, mm -hmm. then we went to Arizona. So by the time we had found this snake and filmed this episode, I think maybe we had, what, maybe 10 episodes under our belt at this point? Yeah, well, I mean, we had, we had been filming wildlife well before the series started yeah. but uh but yeah not this in this not in this structure de definitely you could tell we were still getting our legs when it came to like you know like how quickly do things need to happen to make a five minute video because that was the goal back then it was like make a five minute video take a you know the the format of like the television concept and then right. condense it down i even look at that now i mean how long how long was this video 
uh, five, almost six minutes. Almost six minutes. Like sometimes we don't actually get into finding the star animal till six minutes yeah, in the video true. at this point, you know. Yeah. And what was cool about this is when we used to do these old videos, we were really trying to build engagement on the channel. We would always do sort of a call to action at the end before I gave the outro of encouraging the audience, which at the time wasn't even called the Coyote Pack, just trying to encourage the audience to get into the comment section and write because that would help mm -hmm. boost mm -hmm. the growth of the video. And it's so much fun now. I actually went back last night, was reading through a bunch of the comments. There's so many now on this video and all of the names that people came up for with this snake. Like yeah. we, we suggested to do names, we call them Tommy Tufing, but yeah. man, there are just loads and loads of suggested names from the audience. It's pretty cool. Well, this was fun. Yeah. I guess uh, until next time then. That's right. Should we uh, give them an outro? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm Coyote Peterson. And I'm Mark Vins. I'm Ariel Decoa. Be brave. Stay, Stay wild. wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. Man, we're getting good at that outro. If you've never seen a double-fanged rattlesnake, make sure to go back and watch the original episode where we got Tommy Two-Fang up close for the cameras. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.